Did you know that AMD has been locking away performance for no other reason than to prevent your laptop from burning your legs? That's right, the TDP restrictions AMD puts on their mobile APUs has been locking away the true performance of what your device is truly capable of. But what if we got rid of that restriction? Today, I'm going to put my Ryzen mobile laptop through a series of tests to find out if unlocking the TDP can unlock the true power of the device or if it's going to cause some catastrophic failure that results in my house being burned down. Now given I reviewed this laptop before, I'm not going to go in depth on the ins and outs of the machine, I'm just going to hit some of the highlights. If you do want to see that in depth look, there is a review on the channel, it will be linked in the card if you want to go and check that out. So this is a ThinkPad A485, it is a 14 inch Ultrabook released by Lenovo in 2018. It's effectively the AMD version of the much revered ThinkPad T480. By going AMD, you gave up Thunderbolt support and a little bit of CPU performance, but in exchange, you got considerably better iGPU performance. My model has a Ryzen 5 2500U, a Vega iGPU, and 16 gigs of 2400MHz RAM. However, the main thing we care about in today's test is that Ryzen 5 2500U. With stock settings, the Ryzen 5 2500U in this machine has a 15W TDP, however, some Ryzen 5 2500U lab laptops did have a 25 watt TDP. And we know that that 15 watt TDP is hindering the performance by some amount, but we don't know how much. And to figure this out, we're going to be putting the laptop through a few different tests at three different TDPs, the stock 15 watt TDP, the maximum usually supported TDP of 25 watts, and an overkill 35 watts to see how much performance can be gained and if there are any downsides to doing this almost overclocking. To start at our tests, I want to see what normal usage is like under different TDP circumstances, and basically they're all almost the exact same. Increasing TDP here had no effect on general web browsing. Doing anything from reading articles to writing documents posed no issues. Granted, this wasn't really a surprise as I currently run Pop OS on my laptop and I generally run that with the battery saver on, which actually limits the TDP more than the stock 15 watts, and the laptop has always been very snappy. So if web browsing doesn't really pose an issue for this machine at any TDP level, what if we try something that's a more professional workload, think 3D modeling, video rendering, that kind of work. For this test, I used a sample 1080p 30fps clip taken from my Pixel 7 Pro that's a minute long and did a render in Kden Live using the CPU X264 encoder to see how TDPs would affect render times. At the stock 15 watts, the laptop rendered the 1 minute clip in a minute and 23 seconds. At 25 watts, the laptop rendered it in a minute and 6 seconds, and at 35 watts, it rendered it in a minute and 7 seconds. And you may have noticed, if you looked at those tests a little closely, that the 25 and 35 watt tests were almost the exact same result, and there are a few reasons this could be. Firstly, we could be running into thermal limits. After all, this is a laptop designed for a 15 watt CPU, so the heat sink and fan only account for that. So once we start getting into the 25 and 35 watt range, we could just be seeing thermal throttling. Given that with the web browsing test, we established that single core performance seems to not change in a noticeable way when changing TDPs, and with the video rendering test, we saw that the change between 25 and 35 watts did not lead to an increase in performance when we were under a multi-core sustained workload, I wanted to see how things would change given a dedicated single core test and a more bursty multi-core test. In order to properly quantify that, I'm using Geekbench 6, which I know is biased towards certain CPU architectures, uh, Apple M series, but you know, when we're comparing the same device against itself, it should be fine and we should be able to see the changes in TDP and how they affect the performance of the laptop. At 15 watts, the single core score was a 1051 with a multi-core score of 2395. The 25 watt test saw a result of 922 for single core and a 2963 score for multi-core. And finally, the 35 watt test scored 929 for single core and a 3145 for multi-core. Now with that wall of numbers out of the way, we can start looking into why this result is the way it is. So firstly, we did see a small drop off in single core performance, and this could be for a few reasons. I don't think it was a big enough drop to really worry about it, it could have just been run to run variants or TDP being allocated more to other cores doing background processes when we saw the higher TDP. However, that multi-core score is very interesting because we saw a significant increase. Going from around 2300 points all the way up to 3150, that's a pretty large jump that would see a massive difference in multi-core workloads. And with Geekbench showing a difference between that 25 and 35 watt test, we see a result that is different from the video rendering test. Now if you've ever run Geekbench, you will notice that generally it's not just one sustained task, it's 
it's a bunch of smaller multi-core tasks, which would have given the laptop time to cool down and between tasks, we were actually able to realize the benefit of the 35 watt TDP. And if anybody has a better explanation for the single core decrease, please leave a comment and let me know because my theory could be entirely wrong. And while you're down there, maybe consider leaving a like and subscribing if you're enjoying the video. Now we're on to the real test. It's time for gaming and I'm sorry to disappoint, but I only have two gaming benchmarks today because the benchmarking software I was using was fighting every game I tried. I tried a half dozen games, only like two of them. So for the two gaming benchmarks, we have Mad Max, the 2015 release that deserves more love than it ever got, and CS2. And I know two tests is not that much, However, in other games I did test just without proper benchmarking results, we saw a similar uplift in performance, so any games you would play would likely see a similar uplift to what we're seeing with these two games. Starting with CS2, which was tested at minimum settings at 1080p in a Dust2 deathmatch, we saw at 15 watts an average of 24.1 FPS and a 1% low of 15.7. 25 watts had a result of 37.8 average and a 1% low of 23.4, and 35 watts saw a 34.8 average and a 1% low of 21.2. And with this first gaming test, we see something very different from the other tests we have gone through so far. Looking at the gameplay capture, we see that the CPU is only being used about half of what it could be, so out of the 8 threads, only 4 of them are being used. And this means that a lot of our power increases are actually going to help the GPU, which is under full load during the entire test. See, the way an APU works is the TDP is split between the CPU portion of it and the GPU portion. So when you have a task like gaming, which taxes both the CPU and GPU, on a 15 watt uh, APU, there's not enough power to go around for both of those parts to see their full performance. So by giving the APU more TDP to work with, it meant the CPU could do everything it needed to do while the GPU also had enough power to boost as much as it could given thermal limitations. But CS2 is an eSports title, so will we see the same results in an older AAA game? In this case, we're testing Mad Max, and side note, if this video is out while the Steam Summer Sale is still active, go out and buy the game. It's dirt cheap, it's like a constant dopamine rush, it's super great. Anyways, tangent aside, we tested Mad Max at almost minimum settings at 1080p, Texture quality was turned up to medium and anisotropic filtering was maxed out, but those don't generally impact performance in any meaningful way. At 15 watts, we got an average of 18.2 FPS and a 1% low of 11.1. .1. At 25 watts, the average was 24.6 and the 1% low was 16.6. And finally, at 35 watts, we saw an average of 24.7 with a 1% low of 17.6. So we see a fairly similar percentage uplift that we saw in CS2. However, the 35 watt test actually saw a much better increase than it saw in CS2, most likely due to the fact there's less run to run variance in a single player game. Remember at the start of this video when I joked that this might burn my house down? Well, it's time to talk about temperatures. At both the 25 and the 35 watt TDPs, I had the temperature limited to 88 degrees Celsius, or about the same as what it's limited to at the stock 15 watt TDP. However, with that 15 watt TDP, the laptop generally never got above 80 degrees Celsius. It was almost always fine. However, doing any kind of sustained, somewhat hardcore workload, rendering Vulcan shaders and steam, doing that render test, at the 25 and 35 watt TDPs saw the laptop hitting that temperature limit and the laptop definitely was warmer and producing a lot more noise. So if you're the kind of person who commonly uses your laptop on your lap, maybe you want to consider wearing jeans when you use a 35 watt TDP on a 15 watt laptop. A higher TDP also usually means higher power usage. So did we see massive battery life drain compared to the 15 watt TDP when we went up to 25 or 35 watts? To test this, I left Mad Max idle for 10 minutes and looked at the battery percentage drain for all three TDPs. With the 15 watt standard TDP, after the 10 minutes, we saw the battery decrease by 5%, whereas the 25 and 35 watt tests both had battery percentage drains of 7%. Now we're likely seeing the same result for the 25 and 35 watt TDPs in this case, most likely due to thermal limits, or it could have been that given that Mad Max was not maxing out the CPU, that the GPU was boosting as far as it could and not using more power with 35 watts. So increasing TDP does lead to a hit in battery life, but if you're trying to use your laptop like a mobile workstation and battery life is not that important to you, it's probably not that much of a concern. And even then, the power draw was not so much more massive that under heavy workloads I would worry about the laptop dying that much quicker as battery life already isn't great when you're maxing out the CPU. So the question I ask at the end of all of these videos, do I recommend this? Well, you do risk killing your laptop and it can be a pain to get software working to actually get the TDP to increase. 
but you really cannot argue with the results. In every test we ran, there was a noticeable increase going from the standard 15 watts to the 25 watts, and in some cases even going from 25 watts up to 35 watts. And that performance did come at a cost, higher temperatures, and more battery drain, but for a lot of people, those are not going to be a concern. There are plenty of people who are just going to use their laptop plugged into the wall all the time, and they're not going to use it on their lap anyways. So if you're one of those people, go out and try it. You have nothing to lose except for maybe an old Ryzen laptop, but as long as you keep temperature limits under control, it should not be a problem. And that's going to be it for today's video. I know it's a bit nerdier and a bit more numbers heavy than what I do on the channel, but I thought this was an interesting test that a lot of people could benefit from. And if you enjoyed this video, you may also enjoy the one on the end screen. It's what YouTube thinks you'll like best from the channel. Also, if you have any other video ideas you'd like to see in the future or comments about this video, go ahead and leave them in the comments. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing, as random tech videos are what I do here, and taking both those actions helps more people find the channel. Now, I'm Jackson the Nerd, and I'll see you all in a couple weeks.